Are you ready for ArcGIS Server? Are you? Because I'm not. I'm just kidding. Number 10 is about how you work with global data sets in your web browsers. And I have it first, not because it's the least important, but because you can take advantage of this today. Maps like this one with edges on the side are actually history. All the web APIs today support continuous panning around the globe. No more edges in your maps anymore. <laughs> and this will work with any base map from ArcGIS Online, but also with your own services, of course. I pulled this Coral Reefs map service. It was built with 9.3. And here you have a service that has time-aware layers. Look how nicely the animation crosses the deadline. Isn't it beautiful? OK, but it's not just about map navigation. It's also about all the GS operations that you do, drawing graphics, selecting geometries across the deadline. Let me draw a line between Los Angeles and Australia. The red dashed line you see is the geodesic line. Look how well it transitions over as I get across. And it displays fantastically across the deadline as well. OK. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine is for those of you who want to create fully functional web applications but without programming. I'm going to build with you all together an application from scratch in less than a minute with the new Silverlight Viewer. Let me start by pushing the biggest button you see, and actually the only one, Create New Application. Start by picking your intelligent map, which will kickstart your configuration. Let me center the map in my favorite area, Hawaii. And now I want to add a few layers on top. These layers are coming from my own server. Simply browse to it, display the layers, and add them to the map. Now that I am done with the content, I want to add functionality, tools. And there are many tools available out of the box. Tools for selections, for filtering, for editing, printing, geoprocessing. Let's add a geoprocessing task. Same philosophy. You navigate to your server. It will list all the available tasks. And then you simply configure the tool. It's that easy. The final touch to, me, to my application is uh, the title. I want to change the title. And this is pretty handy. Those are uh, different layouts that I can apply. There are many that ship in the gallery. At this point, I'm ready to deploy my application, give it a name. And now anyone that has a web browser can actually access my application right away. Let's zoom in a little bit and run the geoprocessing task that I added. I will define a location in the river network and execute the task. Now, this Silverlight Viewer is now available in the beta site. So you can actually download it today and start playing with it. Now, let's talk about what is coming in the next release of Server in 10.1. And I know uh, for sure you have been waiting for number eight. It is 64-bit native execution for Server. What makes number seven is the new architecture. In 10.1, ArcGIS becomes a pure web services GIS server. It's a peer-to-peer -peer architecture, which is much simpler and robust. This architecture leads to number six. We dramatically simplify the installation and the configuration of server on premises, in your private cloud, or in your public cloud as well. And finally, Number five, ArcGIS Server 10.1 is much more IT friendly. We have eliminated many of the dependencies we had before on DCOM. DCOM is gone. On the Windows registry, on main win on Linux. If you are a Linux user, actually 10.1 is great news for you because of this new architecture. We also have dramatically enhanced access to databases and in new databases like Netitsa. Whether you use SDE or you don't, RTS Server in 10.1 gives you great tools to display your data and even edit your data over the internet. Now let's discuss some functional enhancements that we have in 10.1. Number four is the ability to use live or historical traffic data to enhance your network analysis. Here is a map of San Diego, a traffic map of San Diego. 
you have to admit it's a gorgeous map, isn't it? Let's zoom in a little bit. This is the status of the traffic as of now. Let's go back a few hours in time, and you'll see a complete different picture of this map. Now, what if you could use this information and incorporate it to do your own routing analysis with it? This is the route as of 5 a.m. in the morning. This is the same route at 1 o'clock. You can see that it's completely different. Why? Because it's taking the traffic into consideration. Imagine how powerful it is to take this traffic information, your business data, your workflows, and make better decisions thanks to this traffic data. Number three. Number three, I think, will be of interest if you are a web application developer. You are asking us to enhance map services and basically to do two things handle not just a dozen or hundreds of layers, but thousands of layers effectively in our map services. And number two, you want web application developers to have complete freedom to define which layers are drawn, in which order, and with what symbology. And that is possible in 10.1 with a new capability that we added. It's called dynamic layers. With it, I built this application which illustrates one scenario where this capability comes handy. I have on the side hundreds of variables. I can pick any of them and create a thematic map of the US. Users can also change the symbology of the map by applying a different color ramp or maybe picking a different class break for the thematic map. You can also, at any point, let's say, add an additional map on the side, compare side by side, and highlight the classes you want to look at. The beauty of this web application is that all the maps you saw were rendered server side. And none of the maps you saw were ever pre configured on the server. The application is completely taking control over which layers are drawn and what symbology is being used. This is a very powerful concept coming in into 10.1 that hopefully will allow you to build very cool applications. Number two. I'm not going to disclose what number two is, is about just yet. Uh, let me talk a little bit about this application. It has a base map from ArcGIS Online, a cache map, a map service on top displaying fire information. I also draw a graphic in red myself drawing on, on the application and executed a geoprocessing tool. What you have been asking us to do is to take all of this information and take it to paper as a high quality map printed in a small piece of paper, in a larger piece of paper, but a beautiful map. And we have created in 10.1 an out-of-the-box, high-quality print service. So you can create high-quality maps on demand from web and mobile applications. <laughs> this is, many of you know, this is the number one enhancement request in the Ideas site. So we really appreciate your feedback. Number one is number one because this is what all servers are about. Performance, performance, performance. You are familiar with the concept of drive time polygons. This is a sophisticated operation. In 10 and 931, takes a few seconds to execute, especially if you are using large data sets. In my case, I'm using a network data set with every street in the US and in Canada. I'm also taking this polygon and querying an 8 million US census block table to generate the population chart on the side. As I said, this takes a few seconds in 10. In 10.1, we accelerated this a little bit. OK. You see that? Let me do it again. You see that? Ah, bang, bang, bang. But wait a second, because if you like that, you truly don't understand how 10.1 is. Look at that beauty how it moves as I move the mouse around. It's fast enough is that I can do it on the fly analysis as I move the mouse in my map.